Hi everyone, Andy here, day seven of the BFI London Film Festival. We've got some great movies to show you tonight and kicking it all off is a movie called Strawberry Fields. So I'm off to catch up with the cast and crew and to find out if Strawberry Fields really are forever. You must be extremely proud to see one of your movies showcased here at such a prestigious event. I am very excited, very proud to have my very first feature uh, having its world premiere at the London Film Festival. How would you summarise the movie for the audience going to see it? What can they expect? After How will they feel when they come out of the uh, cinema after seeing it? It's a story, it's quite a female uh, story made by a female director. It's a story of uh, two sisters living in a sort of quite an unhealthy, claustrophobic um, relationship. Uh, so I hope, it's, a, it's quite a psychological story as well, so I hope that the audiences uh, will be uh, somewhat enriched by, by watching a film about uh, the, the complexities of a relationship within a family. And also, um, this is a story about mainly about Gillian, the older sister, and throughout the film she actually has to find her own place in life, in the world, and I think that's the main message of, 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 of the film, whether she's going to manage to do it or not. So is it the movie then that takes the character on a journey through life and all the things, the ups and downs that come with that? Indeed, yes. I mean, at the beginning, uh, she she is very withdrawn. Uh, she's uh, almost to the point of uh, extremely unhappy, uh, very inward looking, and throughout, throughout the film, um, she really grows and she really blossoms. And uh, Anna Medley, who plays the lead, it was, she's quite a beautiful actress, quite stunning, but at the beginning, I mean, you, you know, Fran, the director, made a real effort to make her look almost anorexic, and Anna really blossoms throughout the film, and at the end of the film, you see a, a beautiful young woman on a journey, but you know that she, now she knows who she is, she knows something more about herself, and she knows where she's heading. Looking at your career, and of course, making movies about love and relationships between people, um, what is it that attracted to you to this movie and the script? Uh, certainly, I'm, I don't know if I'm qualified to be making films about love and, and relationships, but uh, what attracted me was that it's just a great script, it's a great story, and the characters are strong, and it's a very female film, and a very female voice, and uh, that is unique, I think, in the filmmaking world. It's there, and, and we, you know, we absolutely um, reference that when we're looking for money or you know getting interest but there's not a, enough of it there um, and and so uh, that novelty as well attracted me. What about as a filmmaker shooting a movie that is a lot of outside scenes especially in the countryside does that present any problems or new opportunities on this particular project? Potentially it creates a lot of problems but fortunately it didn't. We had uh, I mean even a few days before we shot uh, so we started shooting on May 10th let's say so a few days before that was um it just wasn't looking good we were in london and then when we moved to kent we just had blue skies for nigh on 18 days it started to rain the last night actually um and it's a bit misleading because although it was we had blue skies and it was it looked great it wasn't actually warm enough um to you know, it didn't represent the time of year. It was, we were about a month out. So basically, you had some actors and actresses who were wearing skimpy costume, but it was actually very cold. Or we didn't have strawberries. You know, that time of year, there should have been strawberries. There were no strawberries. We had to ship in strawberries, basically, for the strawberry fields. So. You have a very talented cast on board. How did you go about casting this movie, in particular the main characters? Um, we had a great casting director, Julie Harkin. Um, and... You know, Fran, the director, was very particular about who she was going to have. Uh, so we had, um, for Gillian, obviously, Anna Maidley, an amazing performance, very intense. Um, and we, you know, we saw a lot of people, and she just got it. Uh, and then with uh, Emily, played by Chrissy Bottomley, it's a similar story, actually. Um, I think, actually, Emily was, pro Chrissy, playing Emily, was probably the first attached. And, of course, Eamon Elliot is just a no-brainer, you know. 
uh, and then not to mention the supporting cast, you know, Jonathan Benici, Florence Bell, Vanessa Barbarai, um, all, you know, Jack Roth, all really strong and uh, um, just what we needed. How do you think the audience will feel uh, after they come out uh, of the cinema after seeing this movie? Uh, will they feel uplifted or will they recognise some own traits in themselves, maybe, from the characters? That's a good point. I think they'll definitely recognise some traits in themselves. Uh, you know, Gillian asks a lot of questions. She's initially not in a very good place or space. And I think the audience will relate to that. They'll empathise. It's an internal journey and, and Fran draws you in. Um, I think that they will feel uplifted as well because... Uh, it's a very uplifting ending, actually. And, I mean, when you see it, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So for any up-and-coming movie makers that look at our site, uh, tell us a bit more about the funding and the microwave project in, in particular. OK. Well, I was... Um, yeah, the film was financed by the microwave scheme, which is Film London, BBC, Skillset, etc. And um, we were shortlisted and then uh, chosen to make the film through them. So we had to find... Uh, I think it's very, very low budget, £100,000. And they gave us, I think, about 60. So we had to raise 40,000 uh, pounds, which uh, Liam and Lutzer did uh, via, we shot it in Kent. So we went to the Kent Film Office, Kent County Council Film Office, and we went to Screen South and uh, we got money from them. Um, and we had to use a percentage of the crew and we had to shoot for a percentage of time in Kent. We had to, uh, yeah, we had to, well, we, we stayed in there. We had to spend a certain percentage of the, of the budget in Kent, which wasn't easy, it wasn't difficult to do. Um, so that was how we financed the film, but that makes it sound great. But it's like hundred making a film for £100,000, especially considering how ambitious we were with the projects. So I don't think it looks like £100,000 on the screen. Um, it, was, it was fantastic, and we... The reason that we could make that money go so far, in a way, was because the microwave scheme had a whole sort of raft of people behind it. It had some very experienced marketing and, and sales people and support and money people and finance people and, and just a lot of support. And especially now, at this stage of the film, when you're launching it and you're exhausted, there's a lot of people coming in, press and PR people, and they got, you know, as, as our distribution deal. and so. So it's kind of a lot more than 100,000, if you know what I mean, in terms of what you're getting um, support-wise. But yeah, that's how we finance the film. What was the reason uh, for making the shoot in the Kent countryside? Was it to give it a bit more of a natural feel uh, for the characters uh, performing outside? Yeah, well, it was, it was set in a strawberry farm. It was set in a strawberry picking farm and most of them are in Kent. There's very few. We found one in London it's very small, not very visually stunning. And uh, there was lots of lovely farms in Kent so it was kind of and it, the whole film is outside the whole film is is picking fruit and also by the sea and uh, and I know Kent quite well I knew that northern coast of Kent and and I've been fruit picking there and I sort of knew the whole area so my ideal my aspiration was to shoot it in Kent and um, we were so lucky with the weather and it just looks it looks fantastic I think so uh, I'm very happy that we did shoot it there. Was that a fresh challenge for you as a director and a writer shooting something that is predominantly in the countryside and outside with elements and things like that involved? Well, yeah I think we were very I was very nervous about uh, I was kind of paranoid about white skies and kind of flat nasty you know rainy days and it would be a rubbish film if it looked really flat it was all about this kind of this extraordinary sort of beauty that she was seduced by and we needed to be seduced by and we wanted to love the, the world that we're in and so we were extraordinarily blessed with the weather but I think my, my cameraman Dave Miller just performed magic in a way and, and we talked a lot about how we wanted to create this very uh, seductive world it was, it was really needed to be sort of beguiling and sort of seductive and, and so the way we shot it in slow-mo and handheld and everything um, coupled with the with the lighting, I think um, it was a great challenge. Yeah, but it was a challenge because we didn't have many. We had three weeks as well, so we shot it in a very short length of time. Do you think because of the nice weather, maybe it added because it's a love story? 
did that uh, add to the actual over overall look of the picture with blue skies and it being oh, yeah. about something happy maybe yes absolutely i mean this, the, the weather transformed uh, what we did what, exactly what we hoped would happen but never happens in uh, when you're shooting in england is to have three weeks of sunshine you know and so it, it was absolutely about man and a woman in, in, in those fields and you know sun kind of bearing down on them and strawberries and you know ripe fruit and blah blah, blah. so it had to be seductive and that kind of it really helped the film yeah hugely as a tv actress in the past how did you find approaching a role which is more on the big screen in this particular case well, um, prior to filming this, I'd just um, finished shooting uh, three, ro uh, three films, so it was okay. You know, starting on this one, I was sort of um, in the swing of things in that respect, but the film before Strawberry Fields I was doing was called The Arbor, which was a very different um, film. So um, the challenge is with this, uh, I was playing somebody that when I read her on paper, I thought, my God, she's a complete, she's a complete nightmare and... Um, very hard to like her so I, I wanted to and I've never really played someone that at first when I first read the part that I thought I don't like you very much so that was my biggest challenge actually and um, trying to enter her head because she's quite dark <laughs> how, how would you describe the character then is a very ferocious character maybe a lot of very um, fiery yeah she's kind of um, a bit she is very fiery and just incredibly controlling and probably deep down very sort of lonely and quite a, a desperate individual really um, will, and will strive at anything to control the most important person in her life that is her sister yeah what, you, what drew you to the script when you first saw it what, what really jumped out as an actress in the script I think the real challenge, because um, it was very different from, as I said, I was doing the Arbor, which was, you know, the part there was completely, this was very dark, um, insecure human being. And to, uh, as I said, I didn't really, you know, like her greatly at first, but when I, I, I thought, I, but I didn't, don't really like you as a person, this character, but I really want to play you. And in order to play you, I need to try and get in your head and, and start liking you maybe, or start understanding where you're coming from. And I really wanted that challenge, yeah. yeah. So that's a new fresh challenge for you maybe that you've never done before? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Completely fresh challenge, yeah. I've been talking to the director and the producer about the countryside shooting. Oh, yeah. As an actress, uh, how did you find that? And that's obviously maybe a challenge with elements and animals and things about. <laughs> yeah, well... Um, we shot the film in um, under 18 days, so if you're filming in the middle of a field and there's a cow mooing or whatever going on, you know, you have to stop. And um, so, and time is of the essence, but it was a real giggle, but I'm a complete urban bird. I really like, you know, my cities. So um, getting out in the countryside, um, it was probably, probably quite good for me in terms of the character, because I don't think she felt um, at ease in the country as well. But it had, and because it was a really quick shoot, you know, it had all sorts of brought weather conditions and everything but you just got on with it you know but it was brilliant for that really you know you didn't know what the circum completely what the circumstances would be before you were filming a scene and that's brilliant you know really exciting